So I took a class from a very, very famous furniture designer and I was asking him about mistakes. And he said to me, he said, Jonathan, I still make major screw ups on every project and then a bunch of little ones and woodworking is not about being perfect. It's about learning how to fix your mistakes. And recently we've started going over my mistakes at the end of projects and it seems like you guys have really enjoyed that. So I want to put together a video where we talk about how to fix common woodworking mistakes. And a few things you should always know in general about mistakes. First, it's not a mistake, it's a feature. Remember that. Also, don't tell everybody. I see new woodworkers do this all the time. They'll finish a great project, they'll show me it, and they'll go, oh, I screwed up right here. I did this, this is that. And don't tell anybody. Nobody ever notices. You're a way better woodworker than 98% of the people on the planet as soon as you start woodworking. So don't point out your mistakes. Remember, it's a feature. And let me show you how to fix some common errors. Okay, so here's some of the most important tools in fixing. You could fix most mistakes with this stuff. And I'm gonna show you how I use these things here in a minute, but number one is CA glue, which is, oh God, Cyril Acronid. I'm gonna say that way wrong. CA glue, we'll call it CA glue. Wood glue, wood filler. This is by far, this was a recommendation by Mark Spagnola from the Wood Whisperer, Timber Mate. I will link all this stuff down in the description and in the pinned comment, but this stuff is ridiculously great. The color match is wonderful. It's water-based, so it never goes bad. Even if it gets a little dry, you can add a teeny little bit of water. It dries ultra fast. It's dry in like a minute or two. This stuff is really good. A, a good putty knife. Um, also great for fixing dents is an iron, and then blue tape is usually mandatory for fixing. So let me show you different kinds of mistakes and how we use these things. So one of the things that can happen as you're moving wood around your shop and using it is you can get dings and scratches in it uh, that you can't sand out because they're just a little too deep. So we'll, you know what I'll do, I'll take my putty knife here, put a little scratch in there. And again, using this Timbermate wood finish that I talked about here, you just, take it and you want to spread it across the scratch using the edge of the putty knife so that it doesn't create a lot of buildup and is just right on the surface. And this stuff is great because it dries really, really fast. You'll see when it goes from dark to light here, you can already see it starting to get light right here. And once it dries, you just take some fine grit sandpaper. You can do it on your random orbital or hand sand it. Um, if you haven't done any of your finish sanding yet, hand sanding is a great way to go. So now you can see those scratches which were right here and right here. I cannot see them from head on. If I look at it in the light, you can kind of see it. But once you get finish on that, nobody will ever ever, ever see that. And maple is an extreme example because it's so light colored that it is easier to see the filler, but you know, with all these different colors and everything, you can always blend this in. And if you have a strange colored wood that you don't have a match for, you can always mix two different fillers together because they're water-based and try and create a custom color. So wood filler is a great, great thing. Anything that is deeper than you can sand or wider than glue will take up, then wood filler is always a great option. Okay, another thing that can happen is you get chip out or tear out. Either let's say these were dovetails and you were finishing it up, or this is a nice clean square board, you know, it's freshly been milled and you're cleaning it up and then this happens and you get a corner chip. Now, if that had come all the way off, you want to find that's a good reason for keeping your workspace clean and swept on a regular basis is if that had fallen to the floor, you want to save it because that is now the perfect shape to fill it. But, you know, let's say here we just have a crack. That is super easy to fix. Now, let's say you need to fix it now because you're working, you can use CA glue and activator. Or if you have time to let it sit, wood glue is also a phenomenal option. But let's say we need to, we're cutting dovetails right now and we need to fill this. So what we're gonna do, and one of the things to know about CA glue is it has phenomenal pulling strength. It is very strong this way, but it has terrible shear strength, which means any twisting movement is not gonna be very strong at all. And so when you do this, what you're gonna do is put glue in here and then you're gonna spray your activator on here. And what happens a lot of times is you're holding this with your finger and your finger gets stuck and you go to pull it off and you end up pulling your piece off anyways. But because this has terrible shear strength, all you have to do to get your finger off is just turn and it'll break the, the bond without ripping your piece off. So what we're gonna do is we'll just peel that out just a little bit. I'm just gonna hold it, which will be our clamping pressure. Spray a little activator on it. And you can see it dries 
and also that my finger is stuck to it. So all I have to do to keep from breaking my piece is just twist my finger. And that was a great little tip I learned. I can't remember where I learned that, but it makes a massive difference, the twisting of your finger so you don't pull off your piece. Then just, you know, any cutting tool, a hand plane or a chisel. In fact, let's get this cleaned up here so you can see. There you go. You see, where'd that crack go? It's completely gone. Just cannot see it at all. So CA glue or wood glue, what I would do is put the wood glue in there and then take some blue tape. And blue tape has a little bit of stretch to it. It's not a ton, but it's enough to create clamping pressure. So I would attach it to the other side like this and just pull it tight as I can over that and then set that off to dry for an hour. Okay, let's say that that happened as well, but you lost the piece. Um, and this is a trick from Mark Spagnola again, the Wood Whisperer. He has a great video on fixing mistakes as well. Um, so you should go check that out. I'll link that below. So let's say we lost the piece here. This is just a really simple fix. You're going to take your hand plane and you just want to make that flat. So there we go. We've created a flat surface here. And then I'm just gonna take a cutoff from the same board. I'm gonna put a little CA glue on this, spray some activator on my piece here, and just take it and hold it. So now you can see, man, that worked so good. Look at that. That was a huge chunk on that corner. Nobody will ever see that, especially after just like a little bit of sanding. Look at that. Perfect fix. Okay, now here's a technique that I always preach and always use as well, which is gaps in joinery. So let's say that we were cutting dovetails and we had a gap in our joinery. Now this is an extreme example. Um, usually your gaps are tighter than that. But what I like to do is sawdust and glue. It's a great trick and it's almost certain to match the color of what you're doing. It doesn't need to be structural. So you're gonna try and match the color. Now, where do you get the sawdust from? If you haven't saved it from when you're cutting dovetails, here's my favorite trick. So first thing is you need the bag on your sander and you wanna make sure it's really clean. So what I do is I take a vacuum and I vacuum it out. Then I take some 80 grit sandpaper and grab an off cut from the project and just sand it for, uh, I don't know, 20 seconds. Then you just take the bag off your sander and careful so you don't lose any. And just take it and now there we have perfectly colored ultra fine sand dust for making your own wood filler. So then all you do in your joinery gaps, and we're pretending this is a dovetail, when you do your glue up, make sure you've clamped it up so that you've wiped away any squeeze out there is, and then the glue is gonna be right at the surface, and you just take this really fine sawdust, and you just take it and rub it across your joints. And because this stuff is so fine, it's really gonna look really, really good. And using the sander makes such a difference. So we'll give this quick sanding and put a little finish on it. You can see what a great job this does. So you can see, and that's probably way bigger than any dovetail gap you're gonna have. Um, it doesn't make it go away, but that is the full kerf of a saw blade. So that's a pretty big gap and it's just about invisible and it certainly is gonna be invisible to anybody who's not looking for it. So sawdust and glue, great trick. In fact, I use it in <laughs> every single dovetail, every single piece of joinery I ever cut. I always rub a little sawdust and glue in there. Not because I think it's a bad joint, but because, hey, why not fill any teeny little imperfections before I find them and after it's too late once I've done the glue up. So here's a great trick that I love, which is, you know, you've got this finished work piece that you've worked so hard on and you've shaped it and all that stuff and you drop a tool on it or you bang it against something. So let's say we get a dent in it and check out how big this dent is. You can see that's a big chunk. That would really make me angry, especially on a finished piece. Now there's a simple solution to this. You just take a damp rag and an iron we're just gonna pass it over it a few times. So check it out now. So that's where it was and it is just completely gone. I mean, this is such a great trick. I've loved this trick for years and you can just see there's just nothing left of it. Okay, here's another great little quick fix, especially this is something that feels like it's just 
a dire situation, but it's not. So let's say you go to do a panel glow up and you have a gap and this is a big panel. It's right in the middle of your, you know, whatever it is, table, piece of furniture, and you just can't get it to close. Well, very simply, you want the show sides. So these are both the face pointing up. You're going to fold them towards each other. Now you can do this on a jointer, the machine a jointer as well, or you can take a hand plane and you want to make sure that they are flush together. So they're completely the same height. You can use some double stick tape to really ensure. And if you were doing this with a jointer machine, you would just run this whole piece on the jointer. You could do them one at a time. Just make sure that the show side on one was facing the fence and the underside on the other was facing the fence. But you can just take your hand plane and I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit to show you how great this trick works is. And I'm going to tilt my hand plane to about 10 degrees. Now watch this. And if you can see on the camera, these are at a pretty crazy angle to 90 degrees. Look at that. You can see massive, massive angle here. Now what's great when we take these out and go back to our panel glue up, watch this gap. Boom completely gone and you saw that crazy angle I did like I don't even know what that angle is but now we have a perfect glue up and it's just a matter of jointing them with opposite faces facing either the fence on your jointer or the show faces facing away from each other and using a hand plane and I could have done that 10 degrees over here and 10 degrees over here and that's still gonna butt up perfectly when you go to do your glue up okay and now we all know the horror of this you resaw a board or uh, you mill a board and you come back the next day and it is cupped like this. And I'm sort of simulating it here with these clamps just because I did not have a board currently that I could find that was cupped in my shop. The reason that this happens is the when you have a board and the outside is dry, the inside is going to be wetter than the outside unless it's been sitting in your shop for a couple years and it's had so much time to accumulate. But this happens to me on 10 year old boards, I'll resaw them and they'll cup a little bit. And if you don't have the ability to fix it or it's too thin, here's a great little trick that I like to use. So to counteract this, because when you resaw or mill, you're releasing all this moisture on one side of the board, it's gonna cup that way. So there's a way to counteract that. Once it's cupped and it's not coming back, get the other side wet. You can get it real wet and you know, really kind of get water on it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put something flat and heavy on top of it on a flat surface. And you wanna make sure that you put calls on it because if you completely cover it up, it can create some mold or mildew overnight. So you just wanna put a few calls on it, put something heavy like a toolbox or something on a flat surface and it should overnight, it's not always It's not always a guarantee, but if you get it real wet, it should overnight flatten itself back out. The other problem is you lose your safety glasses and then you find out somebody else is wearing them. Give me those. So those are some great tips for fixing common mistakes, guys. Uh, if you have any that I didn't mention that you want others to know about, please leave them in the comments. The comment sections on Katz Moses woodworking videos are awesome. So head down there, leave a comment, Subscribe if you're new here, like this video, do a, smash the like, whatever people ask you to do, do that. Stay safe in the shop guys and have a wonderful day.